Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for the Starship webinar. Today, we're going to uh, talk about some differences between the uh, ShipGear product and the new Starship Cloud platform. My name is Chris Lettner. I'm a sales rep for V Technologies, and I'll be taking you through a brief PowerPoint first, and we'll get into a product demo. If there's time at the end of the session, we'll have a little bit of time for a Q&A and a poll. So a little bit about V Technologies first. Uh, the company was started in the late 80s. We've been developing uh, shipping integrations uh, ever since that time, uh, first starting with uh, strategic relationships with uh, both UPS and FedEx. Over time, that uh, relationship uh, with carriers has expanded to include all the other parcel carriers, uh, as well as uh, a, a number of LTL carriers and 3PLs uh, dating back about a decade ago at this point. Uh, we started with uh, the Great Plains Accounting DOS software back in the early 90s, and that uh, relationship uh, continued with Microsoft uh, and their acquisition of Dynamics uh, back in the early 2000s. Uh, we've integrated with all the versions of uh, the GP platform since that time. Currently, Starship has, uh, or Technologies as a, as a company as a whole has over 10,000 customers using both the Starship and the ShipGear platforms. Some information about our GP integration here. Uh, we offer a plug and play interface that connects to GP out of the box with integrations to uh, both small packages and uh, LTL carriers as well. Uh, with this, you have the ability to automatically update GP with the freight charges, the shipment detail, the tracking, and pro numbers from your shipment. Uh, there's some uh, light fulfillment capabilities with Starship. You have the ability to change the item quantity from the Starship screen. And that'll uh, feed back into GP, move the uh, data. Okay, let's start over again here. We have the Dynamics GP interface here. Sorry about that, folks, technical difficulties. Uh, the, uh, the interface, as I mentioned, has uh, connectivity to both uh, small package and LTL carriers, and also the ability to move the uh, freight and the tracking back into GP. Some light fulfillment capabilities to uh, change the quantity uh, shipped from the Starship screen that'll update back in GP. They also have the ability to uh, produce package and pallet labels with item information, packing lists, bills of lading, and you also have uh, some robust integrations available for both WMS and EDI solutions as well for your fulfillment capabilities. Uh, there's a uh, rate quoting available from sales transaction entry. If you're in the order entry module, you can bring up the uh, Starship screen and do rate quotes. You also have that capability at the point of shipping. Starship's now available in both a traditional on-prem platform as well as the new cloud-based solution. You have the flexibility of installing it locally on your network or hosting it in the data center, or we now have a multi-tenant version that runs in the cloud and you can just open up in a browser. And looking forward, we have the new uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central integration now available. Over the years, we've done some custom work with uh, the former NAV product. Uh, we now have a uh, controlled release available for Business Central. Uh, so if you are considering upgrading from GP to BC, that is now available as well. Uh, look between the two products here. You have uh, ShipGear, which you may be familiar with, has integration available to both UPS WorldShip and FedEx Ship Manager. Uh, with Starship, that brings all of your carriers into a single platform, single user interface that you can manage uh, for both small package and LTL. Uh, Starship offers you the ability to bring over line item level detail so all of your products and quantities can flow through from GP into Starship with ShipGear and just have your order header information. That's useful for tying in your products in a, a kind of commodity driven paperwork, packing lists, uh, bills of lading, export documentation, uh, hooking into EDI, hazmat, anything that uh, is product or commodity driven. Uh, you have the ability to rate shop between multiple carriers. So instead of going to two different screens for UPS and FedEx, you have that all consolidated in one view with the ability to add all of your other carriers in that workflow as well. As I mentioned, Starship offers hooks into uh, some popular WMS platforms. Uh, we also have integration to a lot of the other uh, EDI solutions that are available in the GP space as well. Uh, none of those capabilities are available with ShipGear. 
batch processing is capable with Starship. Uh, so you have the ability to go in and uh, select the range of orders and process them all uh, with one click instead of going one for one. So you can do that uh, with uh, sorting inside of Starship and grouping orders. You also have the ability to define uh, packaging scenarios. So you can have line items that have definitions of uh, quantity of product that can go into packages. And that helps you automate that shipping process by selecting a batch and processing all the orders at once. Starship offers you e-commerce extensions. So we have plugins available for a number of uh, different e-commerce platforms, both marketplaces and shopping carts. Uh, with Shipbeer, you do not have that. And finally, you have the uh, postal rates that are available with Starship. Uh, that's exclusively available on the Starship platform, not with Shipbeer. And then a quick look here at the differences between the on-prem solution for Starship and the new cloud version. Um, with the cloud version, it is software as a service. So you have uh, plans that are available to pay either monthly or yearly, similar to the uh, ship your product. And you're paying for uh, different tiers based on the, the amount of volume that you're shipping. Uh, there's also the perpetual option where you have a, a license that you purchase up front with a license fee and then you own the license and you pay maintenance going forward on that license with the on-prem solution uh, for carrier integrations uh, with on-prem you have you know a la carte pricing available per carrier per module uh, with cloud that's available as a bundle so you get all of the carriers that, that we offer in in a, a in a price tier that you know gives you that uh, for a particular bundle of carriers whether it's a parcel or a parcel and ltl uh, with e-commerce on-prem offers those as individual modules cloud solution gives you all of those different connections included with the single price uh, the new cloud solution does have a 30-day trial that's available uh, you can go to the website and we'll send everybody some more information about that uh, on the follow-up email uh, there is no 30-day trial with the on-prem solution. We do uh, support a few additional features with the on-prem solution that are not available on cloud. Uh, so that includes uh, the EDI uh, solutions uh, that we connect into that's only available on on-prem, as well as the ability to customize documents. So uh, we have a, a set of documents that come standard with the cloud solution. Those will print out automatically, uh, but you don't have the ability to go in and modify those to add your own logo, barcodes, any additional reference data. You can get the documents that come standard with Starship Cloud or any of the documents that are returned directly from the carrier. Uh, with the on-prem solution, you have a, a template designer that you can go in and modify any of the documents. That includes any of the 128 labels that you may need for EDI. With on-prem, uh, there are no free upgrades. It's a separate uh, maintenance fee that you do pay per year for that. With the cloud, all of the upgrades and the tech support are included with your plan. Look here at uh, possibly some familiar logos that uh, you might know. Uh, Starship has a whole host of different modules that are available for both small package carriers and LTL. We recently expanded that list to include a uh, new TMS platform called FreightView. Uh, this is kind of a sister company of the, uh, the previous enterprise TMS um, and freight quote solutions that we offered. This is uh, available through the parent company, CH Robinson, and that can be used to set up a whole host of other regional carriers and other 3PLs that you don't see here on this slide. So we have that option available to expand our list. All the options that you see here on the screen are available as uh, modules through Starship. We've also expanded into Canada, so we now have hooks into carriers like Curolator, Canpar, and Canada Post. As I mentioned, we have the uh, e-commerce integrations available as well. So you'll see a bunch of different popular names here that you may be familiar with. If you're using any of these, they're available out of the box with the new Starship Cloud platform. If there are either carriers that you're using or an e-commerce platform that you're using that you don't see here, feel free to contact myself or your um, customer account manager. and We'd be happy to take your feedback. We are tracking those requests and always looking for ways to expand and improve the software. All right, and with that, we are going to switch gears here and get into the product demo. Just need to switch screens quickly.
All right, uh, with Starship, this is the newer user interface. The browser client is available for both the on-prem and the cloud solution. Um, you have the ability now to install it on your own network, or you can log into a website through our uh, multi-tenant service, and you don't have to install any of the components locally. Uh, all of that is maintained for you. you. Just plug in your account credentials, and you're ready to go. Uh, Starship works similar to Shipgear in the same fashion where you're going to use the document ID, uh, that unique sales transaction number that would reference the transaction that you want to ship against. We can ship against quotes, orders, um, fulfillment orders, returns, invoices. So as long as it's not a posted invoice in GP, we can read and write to that transaction. Similar to Shipgear, uh, we're going to deposit additional information back into um, GP after the order has been processed, uh, but the workflow is very similar. Instead of the keyed import on the world ship or the uh, ship manager screen, you have the ability to uh, scan or enter in the sales transaction that you want to ship here. Starship also offers you some additional tools here to filter the view of the orders down below. So if there's orders with quantities available to ship, we'll populate here. Then you can drill down into a subset of order data here. You can look at just a certain batch or you can sort any of these views by the GP field to come over the order number, customer ID, PO number, ship method, any of the address fields, any of those order header fields that you want to sort on, narrow down this view. You have the ability to do that here. So we'll go ahead and select the transaction and get started with our shipping process. Starship's going to connect over to GP real time, bring in all of that order information and populate either the manifest or the bill of lading for you. Instead of tabs on the screen, you now have these widgets here, which will display all the relevant information. If you want to drill down into that a little bit further, uh, you can click on any of the uh, pencil icons here and that'll display some additional info. So we'll look at our ship to address here. Um, with Starship, Star, you can connect into both the order header or the line item. Uh, ship to addresses in GT. With that, you'll see a green checkbox here to let you know that we validated the address. So that's a standard feature across the board with any of the carriers that you ship with. Starship will um, apply the standard postal formatting if you choose that as a preference. So we can add the zip plus four here. We'll abbreviate the street, boulevard, parkway, and also get into the uh, second address line for the apartment or suite. Starship will also pick up if it's a residential, a rural area, or a commercial zone. So we can apply uh, any additional surcharges to your freight, and you're working with a clean address. You have all the freight information available if you're writing that back into GP. That occurs automatically as soon as you bring the order over. It'll ping the API for the uh, address validation, and then you'll be working with that clean data moving forward with the shipment. Ship method will translate as well. So the carrier and service level will come in here. Uh, that can also be changed here. You can set user permissions if you don't want the operator to change the carrier or service. Uh, you can lock this down as well. But we'll translate that ship method again from the header or the line item level. The accounts as well, we can bring over collect or third party accounts. So if your customer is uh, picking up the charges for this, we can map that over through the integration from the customer car, the order header, wherever that flag exists. Here you have the line items and products. So you'll have the uh, detail here available on the products. Those can be packed up inside of Starship. You can pack them here right on the main screen. You can expand that view to see what's inside of each container. Or you have the packing assistant. This gives you the ability to expand the view here to add additional containers. So we can add a box here. And then we can take items and pack them individually into containers. This lets you do packing lists where you can split quantities of product. If you have a scale, uh, Starship will automatically pick up the weight from that. We can also use the weights in inventory. So we can aggregate the unit weight times the quantity of product to arrive at the weight of the container. Spit, switch back over here to our shipment view. 
You can see that uh, there are dimensions as well. So the length, width, and height can be used to calculate dimensional weights. Uh, Starship also has a uh, package database, so we can store the dimensions of any of the uh, containers that you have. You have uh, the option of putting in all of your own custom containers here. So you can add that here. And Starship will do a comparison between the actual weight and the build weight. So it'll test the charges based on whichever the higher the two of those are. You can calculate the dimensional weight using the containers here. Or Starship has integration to Cubiscan scanners and scales that can uh, also read that in real time. It'll scan the exterior dimensions of your box and calculate the dimensional weight. Once that's ready to go, um, we'll calculate the freight charges. Um, Starship can do that automatically, or you can also uh, run the uh, rate shop here. It'll call out to all the various carriers, giving you a list of options that you can then choose from. And Starship will rank those automatically for you, going from the, uh, the cheapest down to the most expensive. We'll go ahead and stick with UPS ground. So that was what, what the ship view was on the order. Process that, and then push all that information back into GP so you have it there for customer service and accounting. We'll also take a look at the LTL workflow as well here. Uh, basically, same type of uh, workflow. If you want to process LTL, you just select the order that you want to ship. Based on the ship method, that'll bring in the appropriate service level. Really, the only difference uh, with processing LTL is you have the um, two layers of packaging. You have uh, the uh, items that go into boxes and boxes that then go on pallets. This can also be the first screen that you come to if you want to look at that breakout between the containers. So you can add handling units here. And if your uh, pallets or skids can be set up in the packaging database, same as the boxes. On the freight here, you can see the breakdown between your cost and the applied freight. So any kind of handling fees, uh, that you want to apply. Those can be added at the container level or the shipment level. And you can drill down into the rates to see what kind of handling fees were added with freight rules. So here our cost or exposure on the freight is 220.05 with the handling, we're gonna put back 253.06 onto the order. We can also rate shop across multiple carriers for freight as well. So if we want to see what other options are out there, uh, we can do a cost comparison that'll go out to all the various carriers that we have uh, available on Starship and then give you another list here of all the breakdown of the different options. If speed is more of a factor, you can also set up a date and a time here when this needs to be delivered by. So if it's more of a time sensitive shipment, we can parse out any of the services that can't make that transit time. We'll go ahead and stick with r &L. I'll process the shipment here. With that, Starship's going to print out your uh, package and pallet labels, your packing list, also your bill of lading. Uh, we can get bills of lading directly from the carriers, or you have a number of uh, generic options that are available in Starship as well. And let's take a look back in GP at uh, the results of that shipment. So here's the LTL shipment we just processed. It'll give you similar type of information that you're used to seeing with uh, ship gear, uh, just for your LTL shipment though. Uh, you have the order header comments. Those will be updated here with the detail on the freight. Uh, put a header and a footer around our notes, so it's not going to wipe out anything that may already be there in GP. Uh, I'll tell you when it went out, when it's going to get there, how this was processed, piece count with your pro number information there. Uh, we'll also put that tracking or pro number into the tracking table here as well. Here's some of the additional fields that we can update. Uh, with Starship, we have any of the user-defined fields we can read and write data to, so I just put in a 
a shift confirmation as well as our cost here. So we can do a smart list or for running SQL reporting services, do a little analysis on what our freight spend is. You can see here the variance between our exposure on the freight and then what we're going to invoice the customer for. Batch ID can also be updated. So we've tagged the batch, so that'll move it along the workflow. If you're doing fulfillment orders, we can also change the document uh, status. So we can change that numerical number there. Uh, you also have the ability to change the shipping method. So we can put in the actual shipping method that was used and any of the address fields. If you want to, we can have any of those appended as well over here. So for changing the address, we're adding the zip plus four, abbreviating the street, um, any of those address fields can be updated as preferences as well. Beyond the uh, out of the box fields that Starship does update, we can also offer you the SQL extension with Starship that can open up really any other uh, tables and fields within Starship, excuse me, within GP. That could be also used for other applications. Uh, we've done work with uh, things like SalesPad, um, the uh, returns or service model. Uh, you also have uh, any other ODBC compliant databases on the network that we could get into. If you have extender tables within GP, SQL extension really opens up really any data to be moved between the two systems. You do have the ability to customize the notes uh, between the two systems. I'll show you that here on the right back setup. So we have out of the box information uh, that's flowing back and forth between Starship and GP. But you have the ability to tweak that here. Here's where you have the ability to have some of those additional fields written back to any of the user defined fields or the address, the ship method, reverse value translations. And then you have your notes here. So easily modified, similar to what you're doing with ship gear, you have the ability to go in and change the tag next to each string of data. You can eliminate fields, you can add fields. And those are all available here from a drop down. So it's easily modified. If you see that information on the screen, you can easily add that field to the notes that are going back into GP. We have different notes here between freight mode and parcel mode. So you can have different information based on the method of transport. Some of the other uh, utilities that you get with the Starship uh, interface are the uh, dashboard. This is more or less the customer service piece that can be used by anybody in the front office. It's not limited by the number of users or seats that you have on your license. So anybody has access to uh, this application here. You have some built-in analytics that uh, give you some analysis on your freight spend over a period of time. You also have the heat map here, which will give you visibility into shipping trends and where you're shipping the most uh, concentration of product to. Anybody in the front office also has access to the history. So this can be useful for people that need to do tracking, uh, reprint labels or documents and look at the history if there's ever a discrepancy on the freight. Um, you can do searches here by any of the key fields that uh, you're looking for coming out of GP, order number, PO, customer ID, uh, but really any data can be queried here in Starship to find the transaction that you're looking for. You can open this up here. And this will give you the view of the historical shipments. Um, you can take a look at the freight charges here to see how we arrived at that point. Any of the um, uh, records will be here available for you to search on. Uh, this particular one is, is a dummy shipment, so there's no tracking there, but you'll have access to the entire history point by point uh, once it leaves your dock and arrives at the customer and signed for. Starship also has background tracking, so it can be enabled to track packages automatically in the background for you. Uh, so it'll keep the carriers honest. There is a uh, late deliveries report that can uh, flag any shipments that have been delayed or are arriving late. And you can take that and then go file a claim with the carrier. You also have the rate quote utility. 
Uh, this gives you the ability to do rating uh, in the front office that can be invoked from within the sales transaction entry window or it can be opened independently here. That gives you the ability to do some rate quotes ahead of time. Um, with the on-prem version of Starship, you also have the uh, ability to modify documents. So you can take any of the templates that we have built into Starship and you can modify those easily here. That's something that is not available with the cloud solution. You also have the email notification. Starship has custom email notifications that can be triggered automatically. So instead of using the UPS Quantum View or FedEx Ship Alert, you have the ability to do some custom branding here with your emails. You can embed your logo or graphics. You can change the color of the background. Um, any of the fonts can be modified. You have access to add any fields here. Uh, so you can uh, take any of the templates that we have already and then embed whatever additional data you want into the body of the email. Attachments can also be set up so you can pull an attachment from an external directory or uh, one of the cool things here is any of the documents that are generated from Starship, you can have those automatically attached to the ship notifications that go out. So a copy of a packing list, a bill of lading, labels, any documents generated from Starship, those can go out and you can shoot a copy of that to your customer with the ship notification. So hopefully uh, you're being proactive with Starship, notifying your customers. Those can go out automatically, a uh, little self-service there so they can start tracking the shipments themselves and they can go out and look at uh, the shipments and figure out where they're at without calling you. Hopefully that reduces the number of customer service calls that you're receiving. All right, these are the uh, utilities I had planned to share with everyone today. We're going to launch a quick poll here. If you could please take a moment and respond to the poll. While we're doing that, uh, if you have any other questions, you can plug those into the question uh, area of the control panel and go to webinar and we'll field those questions now. Okay, first question we have here, it looks like it's coming from Megan. We have multiple e-commerce platforms. Can we have more than one length of Starship? Yes, absolutely. Um, with the uh, cloud version, you can have access to all the various uh, e-commerce uh, and cart platforms that we offer, both marketplaces and the shopping carts. Uh, so you can definitely have one or 10 or 12, as many different uh, connections as you need. Um, with the on-prem solution, it is uh, licensed uh, per cart, or there's also a bundle that's available as well. But uh, you can definitely have multiple uh, e-commerce connections available with Starship. Thanks for that question. We also have uh, the ability to work with any 3PLs. Uh, yes, we do. Um, Starship does have uh, direct integration to freight quotes and Worldwide Express. Uh, we can also load rates for CH Robinson uh, through freight quotes. We also have the new freight view uh, TMS, and that can be set up with uh, probably about a dozen different uh, 3PLs, a lot of the most popular 3PLs that are out there. So we can get you that information uh, as well. Okay, uh, question here from Jordan. Uh, I've heard you mention SalesPad. Is the freight quote rating available from order entry there as well? Um, no, it's not available as a standard option. We do have a web service or an API that is available to call. Uh, so that could be uh, worked into your workflow anywhere upstream. Uh, we have had some discussions with SalesPad about that over the years, it just hasn't uh, come to fruition. Um, but we do have uh, API specs and web services that can be leveraged to give you that uh, functionality uh, wherever you need to see the rates. So um, I'll be sure to follow up with you and get you the information on that as well. Question from Alan, uh, which version of Starship are you demoing and is it compatible with Windows 7? Um, I am on 20.3. I, I know we're definitely compatible with 8 and 10. 
I would have to check our system requirements to see if version seven of Windows is still compatible. So I'll definitely follow up with you on that question as well. Question here from Chad, can you send multiple orders at once if they all share the same items, weights, and shipping services? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can have multiple orders uh, shipped together. Uh, so that can be done here in a couple of ways. Uh, let me just uh, check the poll here, make sure I'm still sharing my screen. Okay, it looks like the majority of folks have voted, so we'll go ahead and close the poll. Thank you, everybody, for responding to that. All right. If you're able to see my user interface now, you have the ability here to multi-select. So you can have multiple sales transactions selected here, and you can process those all together. Starship also has a grouping function, so if they are all going to the same address, see this up here in that right hand corner, you can select group related. And that will take all the transactions that are going to the same ship to address and send them out together. So we can expand this here and click on that and send them all together. And you'll see all of the sales transactions going to the same place. They can even have different uh, ship methods and Starship will tick through each of those sequentially processing them one at a time and then feed back the related shipment detail back into GP. Uh, so you can ship as many orders as you want to here, uh, provided that you have set up the packaging. Uh, I'll show you that right quick here. Uh, in the uh, item master and Starship, you do have the ability to create um, packaging surrounding the item. So there's some basic preferences that'll take all of your items and put them into the same container. Or at the item level, we can create uh, packaging scenarios for a particular product. Here. So you have your basic information here coming out of GP, the item number, unit of measure, weight, description. For packaging, you can have different scenarios defined. Uh, so we can have uh, one of these created. Um, so we can put a certain quantity of product into a particular container. So if you have uh, case packs or individual items that are uh, packed in a certain container, Starship can automatically create the packages and you need to uh, enable that sort of functionality in order to run the batch processing. We can certainly get you some more information on that, Chad. Thanks for the question. All right, we are just about at the end of our time here for today's presentation. Look for a follow-up email with a recording of the webinar today and some additional information. We'll also be uh, calling folks to answer any other questions that may have been generated. I'm gonna put up my contact information here. So feel free to email me. Again, Chris Flettner, V Technologies. All of our social media links are there. Thanks for your time and attention today. Have a great day.